so about last class i was had something to ask you guys do you think like do you guys have any feedback for me like is there any questions comments concerns or like am i talking too fast or talking too slow or any of the sort you guys can just like say stuff or not <laughs> that's fine too <laughs> um but yeah if you guys have any questions about about last class the stuff we learned too you guys can ask them right now too i guess we'll start right now um as usual we're gonna start with our lesson overview today we're gonna first start with the short recap and then go on to strings learn about user input what are lists functions of lists and a little small fun project which is yeah okay so it's a really short review little quiz not a quiz it's only like two questions long but number one what are variables in python yay that's right things that store value good job okay and then number two which happens to be the last question python does not know pemdas when doing calculations false very enthusiastic yes that is correct as well how sweet. We are done with our little quiz. Um, let's move on to the next part of the lesson. Good job, everyone. Okay, so the next part is strings. Um, we went through this like briefly last class at like the last 10 minutes, but we'll go over it again like in more detail this time. So strings, as we said, um, in Python, they're texts or like a collection of letters. And they're based, yeah, they're basically just text. Um, and to create strings, we use single quotes or double quotation marks. But like if we use, is there any way to enter the meeting? Oh, like the registration thing? I think that is not possible because the host of this meeting who just left, um, she made the meeting. So like you had to like register for it so you can get like an email and you can have all the times and links and stuff. So I don't think that's possible yeah okay okay continue back um what was i saying i was saying okay strings um double quotes single quotes yes and then if you want to do multi-line quotes either use three single quotes or backslash in before the line you want to enter and we will take a look at this example real quick right now um right here okay so basically what we want to do here is for our single line quote we're going to want to print out hello world and that is going to be our problem one how to print out single line strings okay so um the string here is basically is hello world and then the first way to do it is to use double quotes and then double quotes on the end and then it prints out like that or if you can also use single quotes and single quotes at the end and it also does the same thing um honestly personal preference i don't care which one you use and then um the next thing we want to solve is multi-line strings so basically we can use like three single quotes and then enter in the place you want to enter for example hello world and then on the next line i like purple then you would enter right here and then it would come out as two lines or use backslash in before the second line like i like purple backslash in before that and then like it does the same thing basically yeah okay go back real quick because i forgot to talk about something um and then we also went over this quickly last class, but um, for strings that contain like double quotes or single quotes within the string, to fix that, either, yeah, so if there's only single quotes inside the string, then use double quotes outside. But then if there's only double quotes, then use single quotes outside. If they contain both, either use three single quotes or put backslashes between before each of the quotation marks and like that's called escaping they're basically like escaping out the quotation marks that 
are not part of the outer strings things okay wait that sounds a little confusing we shall take a look again so like for example right here um the dialogue is like blue is my favorite color he says then we can use single quotes on the outside um so it doesn't like air out it, it won't think like he says it's not part of the string and then so it works right here or if there's like a single quote it's like i'm not sure then you can use double quotes on the outside and that will work too but like if you have a sentence like i don't really like apples she declares then you can use three single quotes or use um backslash be before each of the quotations so to escape it out um, i forgot to print that but it does the same thing as the prior thing Yeah, so those are a couple of ways. And then for all the problems, like from here to here, those all can all be fixed by using uh, three single quotes. So if you don't want to memorize all of that, just use three single quotes for like everything. It would work. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Okay, I shall move on. If you guys do happen to have any questions, either like say it or type in chat or private message. And yeah, okay, let's keep going then. So now we shall move on to more strings. Strings are very fun, sort of. Yes, okay, so. Now we're going to try embedding values into strings, which basically means to insert values into strings. Um, it is also known as string substitution. So embedding values and string substitution are the same thing. Um, yeah. And then so there's two ways to do this. So either use percent %s in place of the value you want to substitute inside the string, and then use percent to join the string with the value, or use the addition sign to connect values and strings. But like, for example, if the value you wanted to connect, it's like an integer, then Python would be like, oh, but the rest are strings. Why is that an integer? You will have to like change the type of the integer to like a string, which also sounds confusing, but we will take a look at that too. <laughs> okay. So basically like um, the first way is using percent %s. So we want to print out like I scored a thousand points. Then we will use like percent %s in the place of the 1000. And then when you print it, you're going to print message percent my score without the s anymore. So if that prints, it would be like I scored a thousand points. And then it's the same thing for like strings too. It's like today's weather is blank and it could be nice or it could be bad or it could be sunny or whatever you want it to be. Oh no. And then run that. Yay. And then if you wanted to print like multiple values, like for example, you have I rolled a blank and a blank, then you can do the same thing, percent %s, percent %s. And then you connect them with a percent sign and then put the multiple values inside parentheses and separate them with a comma. So you can see on this side, I rolled a one and a five. And like, you can even put like strings in here too. Like I rolled a one and a five and a three. I forgot to quote this, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so like it would just know the first percent as corresponds to the first value here. And then this one corresponds to the second one. And then the last percent as corresponds to the third value you put inside the parentheses. And that's how to use percent as to embed, embed values. And then the second way is to use the addition method. Um, it's slightly easier to understand. So basically just like have a string and then you add it to 
your my score. So you go like, I scored plus my score plus points, essentially. But then like, if you don't have like the STR, STR stands for string. Like if you don't have it there, which we were talking about earlier, Python would be like, yeah, you can only concatenate strings. Concatenate basically means to like connect. So like, you can't have an integer here because these are strings. So you would have to change the integer into a string. And this is only applies for Python, but um, you would like change it like that. So they're all strings now. And then you're able to print it out like that. And like for the last example as well, you need to convert them all to strings because the original variables were numbers. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Mm hmm Go ahead. What's the difference between a um, a apostrophe and quotation marks? Quotation marks are like um like these things. Like they're like two of them, two lines. What's and the then difference between you're doing Python? Like what's the difference between putting two and one? It's like it appears the same. Yeah, it's there's no difference. It's personal preference. I'm just saying like there's like multiple ways you can do it because some people oh sorry, there's someone in the waiting room. Some people like to use like a quotation mark and some people like to use an apostrophe but honestly it depends on what you like to use yeah um as you can see i usually prefer using quotations but it doesn't really matter you do you any other questions also when i'm typing a apostrophe it, mm -hmm. there's two of them yeah so what this does is like it like python it does it automatically for you because when you type apostrophes it's like thinking oh you want to print a string so you can just do this and like it has the both ends already there for you so you don't have to type it again at the end it's just like if you don't want it there you could just like delete it like that but like it just does it for you automatically if that makes sense <laughs> Did that? Okay. Uh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Any other questions? Okay. Taking that as a no, let's move on. Okay, so um, we are going to say goodbye to strings. Oh, wait, no, we're not. I'm just kidding. Present this. And then in Python, you can do this little handy thing called multiplying strings. Um, as far as I know, uh, not every language does this i think it's only like limited to python and so it does this little handy thing where you're able to multiply strings just as you would be able to multiply numbers and um you can use this to like line up strings with a specific number of spaces about before it or like just for spam just like print out one letter like a thousand times so for example we have a string, string equals A, print string times 10. What do y'all think it will do? Um, I shall just run it and see. It will just make 10 A's, how fun. <laughs> and then, or like you wanna write a letter on Python, like you have, when you're writing a letter, you have like this gigantic space before it or like a diary or something. You can just have like, spaces equals a space times like 50 and then you can have like and then like it would like just space it out for you like that whole thing and then you can write the rest of your letter like that yeah very handy okay that's it um before we move on to something else that is not strings does anyone have questions on strings okay i shall move on um So our next topic is going to be user input. And what is user input? Basically, it's a input from the user <laughs> from the name that you can collect from the computer. So like you ask a user something and the computer will collect its like answer. And it's extremely useful when you're creating an interactive program when the user can cooperate with the program. And then so to use it, you basically have to set a variable to represent the information you're asking for, and then set the variable equal to input 
and then you could put your like question inside the quotation marks or the apostrophes, whichever you one you want to use. And then so there's also different types of user input. Um, the input type first defaults to a string. So no matter if you enter a number or like a text, it will still be a string. So if you wanted the input to like just be a number, a number, you would have to specify like um, you would have to put integer or int in front of the input. And we can take a look right now. So color equals input what is your color what is your favorite color and the number equals int input what is your favorite number so that just basically means that it will have to be in a number otherwise it will like error out so if we were to try that what is your favorite color red what is your favorite number three if we do that then it will like error out so you would have to put like the integer three <laughs> okay we can try that again and then three and then like if you wanted to test like oh what is the type of variable like what is the type of this variable you can just like print type and then put the variable number and in, um, name inside so for example even if I was to put like what is your favorite color three what is your favorite number three it would still say that my color is going to be a class string so it's just going to default to a string, no matter if you put an integer or not. So, yeah. And like, so, yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. But yeah, that's how it works. Any questions about user input so far? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay, I'm just going to move on. <laughs> so then let's practice. So our practice is going to be ask the user for their name and age and then print out their name and age example below. And then I will show you my example. I covered up the code this time. Okay, run. What is your name? Someone give me their name. Okay, I'm just going to pick the first one off the list. Antonio. Oh, hi, Cindy. What is your age? Antonio, how old are you? You are 12. Okay. Hi there, Antonio. You are 12 years old. Just something of the sort. Doesn't need to be exactly like that. But yeah, go for it. After you guys are done, you can just say done, or you can just paste the code into the chat, or you can just say done, sit back and relax, and after everyone's done, you guys can share screen and show me your code. Whatever you guys want to do. Um, do you press enter to move on or what? Hmm? How do you like move on? Type it in. Just just press just like type your input in. Oh. It should just like keep going. It's not keep go it's not keep oh whatever. No, show me, show me. Maybe I haven't. Uh, no. Maybe I haven't. I haven't done something. No, no, no. Sh okay. Are you sure? Ah. Uh, are Are you sure you got this? I I I just haven't done something. Okay, okay. Then yeah, keep going. Let me grab my slides again. Are there any like difficulties or how are you guys, where are you guys at? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I hid my code last time. Well, I'll show it right now. Okay, wait. So basically, Where's my code? Okay, there it is. Um, I made a variable called name and then a variable called age and then input, what is your name? And then int input, what is your age? So that it can't have a 
non-integer input. And then I use um, the embedding values. You can use the percent s if you want. Uh, that probably would be easier, but um, I don't know. I just did it like that. But uh, to like join the two together and there it is. And if you guys want me to go back to the embedding values part, I can go back to, let me know. And um, Cindy, it would also be great if you sent me your code as well. The result looks good. And Antonio, is there still any other questions? Okay, good. Oh, Christopher, um, you share screen and let's take a look. Mm, print, hey, you, name. Yeah, I think you do need to press enter after. Sorry. Okay. I was probably not making that clear. Yay. Okay. Your thing seems fine other than that. Good job, good job. Antonio back at it with the great variable names. Um, that works, yeah. Not entirely what I was looking for, but it's basically the same thing. Yes, good job. Is anyone else still working on it? Um, how do you not delete it? Because if I create a new one and I run it, it it's it just runs the old one. What do you mean runs the old one? Like runs the other one. Like if I add a new file, it just, it runs the other one too. Like you're saying, like if you if you open another rep REPL? No. Oh. I'm saying if you open the same one, if you open a new file on it, it just runs the other one, not the one you're on. <laughs> Show me again. I'm sorry, I can't see this in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you're opening a new file, that's like basically saying that's another project. Yeah, you know? but when I open the new project, it... Mm -hmm. It doesn't run the new project. Uh, do you want to show? Try it real quick. Oh, because probably because um the file usually you need to upload it. Like you need to download a file. Oh, that works too. Okay, go ahead. Run the other one. Usually, a file you upload it. It's like you upload it from like your local computer, and it like it doesn't really. It's supposed to be like you call the file from your main dot pi, and it's not like another project. It's like your pot your project right now is whatever this your project. Okay, I don't know how to explain this. So basically the main.py is like where it runs things. And then your other files are just like contributing to your main.py. And like if you want how the How do you add a new one? How do you add a new one? Uh you go click the black little circle wheel at the top. And then click new REPL. And then click Python. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you can name it whatever you want. Okay. I don't know how to explain, but like you need to call your file inside of your main pi if you want it to run. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to go through everything today, but we'll try our best. So this is another new concept today. It's called lists. And um, basically lists are just like the lists we use in everyday life. Um, it can be like shopping lists, to-do lists, et cetera, et cetera. And in Python, we create lists to store items. And most of the time, it's like items that like are grouped together. Like you wouldn't just have like random things. But like if you wanted, you can also store random things. <laughs> and to create a list, we use brackets, um, those things right above the quotation marks, and then uh, use quotations and then commas to separate the items. 
I forgot to write the commas, but yes. Um, lists can store strings, integers, both, and other lists as well. And lists inside lists are called nested lists. Um, and why do we use lists? Well, they are more powerful than strings because they're, they can be easily changed. So like, yeah, we can take a look right now. Let me switch tabs, switch tab. Oh. For example, we have a shopping list here and it contains butter, milk, eggs, bread, tomatoes, lettuce, cheese, cereal, and hand soap. Um, and then if we run that, it will print out the list for you like that. Or you can just have some numbers and you have a number list or you can have numbers and strings in a list and Um, numbers and strings in it. Um, Replit, if you're asking about the website, it can be used on an iPad, on a mobile phone, basically anywhere you can access the, like a Safari or Google Chrome kind of thing. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. And then, so for example, numbers and strings, why was six afraid of seven? I feel like everyone knows that joke, but anyways, um, just to demonstrate. Or you can have like a list of lists, which we were talking about a nested list. So you can have shopping list and some numbers, and that is the list of lists. Um, do you have to use the underscore? No, you don't. Name it however you like. But like usually, there's like different. You can also do like to separate words because if you just have like big list is one word, it can be confusing sometimes if your like name is long too. So. Usually people use underscores to separate words or like use caps to separate words like that. Depends on whatever you want. Yeah. And for the things here too, again, back to the apostrophe question, you can use apostrophes too. Basically apostrophes and quotations are interchangeable. Like over here, it just default prints it out in like apostrophes. Yeah. Okay, any questions on lists so far? Okay, no questions. It's already 7.30, so I'm afraid we'll have to end class today. Um, we'll continue on lists and everything else next time. We didn't get the chance to, but that is completely fine. Um, yeah, so we'll end here today. It was a sort of a short class, but I'll see you guys next week. Bye.